Uh, evening, Blake. Uh, how would you describe the impact uh, Pierre Luc Dubois made with your team tonight? Yeah, I mean, it was it was evident. Uh, he's a very very powerful man. You know what I mean? Um, you see him, uh, you know, with without his uniform on and just in his shorts and t-shirt. I mean, he's a he's a young man, but in a in a an adult body. You know what I mean? He he just um, he's just tapping into his potential as a player, um, you know, some of the little, little things that he does with the puck, the way he protects it, the way he can make guys miss, um, pretty special player. We'll go next to, uh, Jamie Thomas from Jets radio. Go ahead, Jamie. Hey Blake, what did you like about what you guys did after you fell behind two nothing tonight? There was a lot of time. And, um, I think for us, our, our goal was to, our biggest hurdle was going to be the second period. Um, you know, third periods have been good to us this year. Uh, you know, we've played really well in the thirds and, you know, we felt that if we could uh, win the second period and, you know, get it within striking distance and, you know, we'd have a, an opportunity to tie it up and, and, and win the hockey game. And we'll go next to Mike McIntyre from the Winnipeg Free Press. Go ahead, Mike. Blake, I know you, you don't always like to talk about yourself, but uh, watching, especially on the slow-mo replay, the two passes that you make to set up the first goal, especially the second one, uh, that, that looks like at an extreme degree of difficulty, what you sort of did there. Can you just sort of break down uh, that, that little bank play? Yeah, just, uh, you know, really great job by, you know, by Mark. Uh, on the first one, he kept the play alive. Um, you know, I had Doobie going back door the first time around and, and I missed him and Mark jumped in there, kept the play alive. So, you know, we got a second, second crack at it and, you know, Doobie made a, you know, great shot to score. And then, um, yeah, I just, you know, I, I heard Mark coming on the second one and just tried to put it in an area for him to, uh, to skate into it. I had no idea that he was going to have a breakaway, but, um, you know, credit to him for, for, you know, starting underneath the puck first and foremost and um, giving me an opportunity just to put it in an area for him. Go next to Carter Brooks from Game On. Go ahead, Carter. Hey, Blake. Can you talk a little bit about uh, Neil Pionk and what he's been able to provide on the offense the last little while? Well, what about last year? You know, I think he led our team in power play points last year. And um, he's, he's an, I mean, just a, an awesome hockey player. Uh, you know, a guy that uh, you'd consider undersized, but he, he, he certainly doesn't play undersized. I mean, you've got, you guys have seen him. Uh, he'll, he'll, he'll run into anyone at full speed, um, makes incredible plays with the puck. Uh, you know, and he, he's shown, you know, an ability to, to bury an open opportunity. So um, the more opportunities we get a guy like him, you know, the more success we're going to have. And we'll go next to Murat Atesh from The Athletic. Go ahead, Murat. Hey, Blake. Um, on a moment ago, you mentioned Mark Shifley keeping plays alive on, on both of those, uh, those goals that you set up. And I think that there's a power play goal the other night in Edmonton. He extends the play. You pass it across for him. Is is this play keeping alive, pardon me for the phrase, like a big part of his offensive streak right now as well? well I think it's 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 a it's what uh, as a line, you know, that's what's made us effective over the years is um, just staying on the puck, um, you know, just wearing down the other team, wearing down the guys we're playing against. And the more you – get your body into people, the more you get your stick on pucks, the more you don't allow clean breakouts over the course of a game that wears people out. So, you know, he, he has, uh, you know, an incredible ability to get his stick on the puck. And um, I mean, even on, even on his goal tonight, uh, you know, he, he kind of saw the guy sleeping a little bit and he jumps him and pokes the puck to me. And then he, you know, takes off for the races. So those are little plays that, that kind of go unnoticed, but uh you know, when, when you when you play with a guy for long enough, you kind of know know what he's looking for. And, um, you know, he's 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 on it right now. There's no question about that. We'll go next to Drew Mindell from the Illegal Curve. Go ahead, Drew. Blake, when you come back and, and win a game after giving up a, a late goal like you did tonight and like you did in the first game against Edmonton, you know, how does that impact the dressing room uh, beyond tonight and sort of give that confidence boost to the team knowing that uh, – that you know, there's no sag in the performance after the after the giving up the late goal. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think we we really like our our play late in games. Uh, we've had a couple unfortunate situations this year. We've lost games, and 
kind of incredible fashion. Uh, you don't see that very often in the NHL. So, I mean, you take those those losses out of the books and, you know, our record's uh, right there at the top of the league. So um, I, I think, like, I, you know, to answer your question, I think we like the way we play in the third period. And, um, you know, we seem to be firing at all cylinders in that period. And um, sometimes you got to tip your cap. I mean, guy hits a one-timer right under the bar, What you know, what are you going to do, right? So uh, tip your cap and move on and try to win the game. And final question to Ken Weed from Sportsnet. Go ahead, Weaver. Blake, uh, Mark Scheifele made it pretty clear he was a big fan of uh, three forwards in overtime. Uh, what do you think about the philosophy? It worked. Uh, it worked out tonight. You know, um, it, it's such a interesting dynamic, you know, the the three on three. Um, you know, you almost feel like there, there aren't any defensemen out there, you know, especially when the other team has possession in, in you know, in our defensive zone. I mean, everyone's playing kind of defense the same way anyway. So um, I'll just leave it at it worked out tonight and we'll see what happens next time. Thanks very much.